Alright, so we're still waiting on that flow coat to sh show up. Um, I figured while we're doing that, it's, the weather's not that great, but I don't think it's going to rain. And even if it does, it'll probably clear up this afternoon. We might pull all the uh, sails out and give them a wash and see what we got. And uh, yeah, when we took the boat out, we pretty much bought all the sails into the shed and just dumped them underneath the cub there. Grandfather's 1946 J3 Cub. Maybe that will be in a restoration video one day. Alrighty guys, so it did rain. Made the uh, task a little bit harder than what it should have been. So we're looking at the main here. You can see the orange stains on it. They're not. That's not rust there. It's actually uh, clay from the swallows that kept uh, building nests in the main. So I'm guessing they'll eventually come out, those stains, hopefully. But I uh, just gave it a quick wash. Tried to dry it out as much as I could. Look at that dolphin cruiser's sail there. That's, um, that's one from when the boat was in survey. You might remember from a previous episode, I told you that the boat was in survey. Uh, this is a spinnaker that was in the kit. Um, it's massive. Like the, the video isn't doing it any justice, but it's, it's massive. But uh, it also has a lot of patches in it and um, and a lot of holes. Or uh, There's still pin holes in it, so um, I might take it out on a low wind day and see if I can blow it up, but uh, I definitely won't be taking it on any passages. This uh, red canvas thing here, this is like a boom tent. So uh, I'll be getting rid of that too. The color won't match and uh, it's not really big enough. All right, so it's Sunday the 7th now. Uh, tomorrow, Monday, we are getting the new beams for the boat. It's coming off a, um, I think it's like a 14 meter catch. Um, yeah, so got a, the crane booked in to go lift the mast, he's going to lay it down on some trestles and we'll cut it up into the lengths that we need and I'll take it away. So we're in pretty good nick, the part, it's a keel stepped mast, so the part that goes down through the cabin, uh, down onto the keel is actually in really good nick, the paint's still perfect from factory. So. I'll probably use that first section for the mast beam on the sea wind and then use, I'd, I have no doubt the rest of the, the parts will be good, but uh, I'll just use the other ones for the front and aft beams anyway. Just so we have the strongest, newest looking part underneath the mast, which is the most important. But uh, yeah, today I'm just taking the daughter out on the boat not the sea wind, of course, but uh... playing playing on Round Island. But uh, yeah, tomorrow should be good. And then the flow coat turns up either tomorrow or Tuesday. So then we can start putting that on and fairing and bogging, and that's where we were supposed to be already. But uh, yeah, can't help these things. So. I'll see you in the morning. Alrighty guys, it's early the next morning now. So I'm just heading back out to the boat just to double check the, so the length of the beams that I've got now. The uh, measure twice and cut once sort of deal. Because uh, we don't really want to stuff this up, we only get one shot at it. But uh, yeah, it's about 5.30 now. I'm going to uh, charge up all my batteries for the cordless grinder, get these measurements and uh, then head down to the slipway where they're going to pull the mast off the boat and uh, help them with that. Then I'll chuck them on the ute and bring them back out to the boat. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. So I got down here a bit too early but that's the the boat we're getting off, getting the uh, beam off, that forward mast, 
going to be the new beams of the sea wing. So it was a bit hard to record audio at the slip yard here. Had a bit of machinery going and the high pressure washer, but uh, yeah, we had the crane set up and it just laid it down on the ground here. And uh, yeah, I got to stripping it, got all the stays off it and uh, all the wiring out of it, the spreader bars off it, and got to measuring it out and cutting it up and uh, just put it on the back of the ute, took it home. And uh, yeah, now we got some new beams. All right, finally got the beams home. Let's get them down and I'll uh, give you a look. All right, here they are. That's the section, a little bit thicker than the last one. So that's about four and a half mil, the other one's four. They feel lighter and they feel stronger. So that's good. They're not quite the same profile. The, uh, the profile of the other one is more of like a teardrop section. I'll show you. It. You can see it there. But uh, we'll make it work. Got a winch with one of them. The uh, handle stuck in it, so I'll have to draw that out. That's loose in there, but the release pin's just seized in there. But uh, the oh, sounds are right. service and it should be fine so you got a free winch with it a few things that we got to clean up just like where anchor lights were that's where a spreader was and uh, yeah should be good speaking of the spreaders too I've uh, left them down at the harbour just for now I'll go pick them up tomorrow but um, they look like I was gonna just scrap them give them to the blokes here and they're gonna cash in the aluminium but uh it was actually like sleeved over the beam with uh so where are we looking yeah there it was sleeved over the beam and uh obviously the spread has come out off the mast one half of those looks like uh awesome davits so i've kept them i don't know i might rivet them back on and use them for davits for uh mounting solar panels maybe but uh, yeah, if it doesn't work out, I can always throw them out later. But thought uh, it might be better than chopping it up into pieces and uh, cashing them in. But um, yeah, we'll just sand these up and obviously get rid of the brown. There's uh, not that much corrosion on them at all. The um, small one that's for underneath the mast, um, I was going to take it off this one. You can see the paint's real good on that one. Um, that's the part that was inside the cabin. So it was a keel step mast. But, um, yeah, there's uh, actually more corrosion on the part that was in the cabin than there was on the top of the mast, which makes sense because uh, the top of the mast is further away from the salt water. So I took the middle beam off the top of the mast. This is the one under the, the sea wind mast. We want the strongest. But, um, yeah, I don't even know if we will put a dolphin striker on this now. I know my model Sea Wind came out with dolphin strikers on it, but uh, I think somebody mentioned that uh, the later models don't, they had uh, beefier beams and no dolphin striker, so I don't know, maybe one, one less piece that I have to keep an eye on, but uh, we'll see. If it's not strong enough, we'll just put the striker back on. So obviously going new would be uh, would be better, but uh, the budget doesn't allow that. So just to give you an idea, um, I needed about 12 meters of beam, and to get 12 meters of beam brand new at 270 bucks a meter, plus trying to get it here, it'd be up near four grand. I got that mast off a boat that got pulled out in the local marina. I uh, just chopped it up on site and bought it home on the ute. 
and it cost me one thousand dollars so saved a fair bit of money doing that and uh yeah there's nothing wrong with these they'll clean up just fine and uh be tons stronger than what was already on it so uh pretty happy so what brought the uh the old beams undone was the crush tubes in the end of it where the bolts go through so there's a, like a bolt goes through there and a little, one a little bit further down in the longer beams and uh in the original beams they had like a aluminium crush tube with a stainless steel bolt through it and uh, that caused all sorts of galvanic corrosion i'll uh i'll just take you over to these beams and i'll show you what i mean so this is what this is what i was trying to do i was trying to patch it so that's got a six mil backing plate in it and riveted around and i really wasn't happy with having to use these again so like we were we were gonna if we had to but uh now we don't have to but uh that's probably one of the better ones there is one of the uh one of the ends that was just shocking like and uh it's pretty scary that i sailed this uh sea wind from noosa back to harvey bay in uh in queensland with those beams in it it's uh Probably a bit, uh, bit of a silly thing to do now that I look back on it, but uh, I made it all right. But uh, I'm definitely going to be a lot, uh, a lot easier on the mind sailing with these beams. That's for sure. So there's a comparison of the beam section. Definitely more solid. That's for sure. And uh, these are the saddles that were in the decks for the old beam. You see they're sort of the teardrop shape. So these no longer fit. But uh, I'm probably going to mold these beams into the deck, I think. Fill all these spaces in to the deck. And uh, yeah, it'll be a bit more of a snug fit and don't have to worry about anything like this corroding like this one's doing and probably be a bit more watertight too so i just got to cut the end off off this one here and uh, then i'll just put them up on the on the tray out the back there or a, a while off needing beams sorted so um, I'll pull those out and um, paint them up and grind them all clean and stuff closer to uh, needing it or if uh, if that flow coat doesn't turn up it's supposed to turn up tomorrow so uh, hopefully it does then I'll get back into fairing the holes but uh, yeah probably leave this episode here and the next one We'll be fairing the hulls, fingers crossed, tomorrow. Catch you later.